In this video, we'll be taking a look at PCA. PCA is a mathematical technique that is used in machine learning to reduce the number of features or dimensions um, with the minimum amount of information loss possible. There are multiple reasons for wanting to do this. One of the main reasons is visualizing your data. And so as humans, we can't see data that is in more than three dimensions at once. And so if you have multiple features, being able to reduce those down to three or two would be really helpful. It's also particularly useful in reducing the number of features so that um, it reduces the amount of computations you have to do. So typically, the more features you have, the more processing power it takes, depending on the algorithm. For example, say you were working for a company and you wanted to predict the price of houses in your area. Well, you would start off by collecting the data and let's say every sample contains the properties for a given house and among these properties is the number of bathrooms, the number of bedrooms, and the square footage. Um, from a common sense standpoint, we would suspect that the square footage and the number of bedrooms and number of bathrooms would be highly correlated. And so, right, the bigger the house, the more bedrooms it has. And so, essentially what PCA would do in this case is it would try to express this underlying feature, which is, let's say, size, as a single dimension instead of uh, three separate ones. Um, what PCA would do is it would start off by taking all these samples and then centering them. And then it will compute the eigen vectors and eigenvalues and basically the eigenvalues will tell you the uh, magnitude of the vector and then the eigenvectors will tell you the direction and so I won't get into it too much in this video I will put a link to it in the description. There's a very good video on this. But essentially, um, the vector with the highest eigenvalue um, explains most of the variance. So what we end up doing is we end up eliminating the lesser of the two. And so in this case right here, the red one is the one we're going to go with. So we're going to remove that vector right there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to extend this one. And we're going to project the points onto the vector. And so this point will get projected there. This one would get projected there, like so. Right, and then after, what we would end up getting, oh, come on. We would get a one dimensional plot of our data. 
let's take a look at how we'd go about implementing PCA in Python. So to start off, we're going to want to import the necessary libraries. So we're going to import pandas, numpy, and matplotlib, no surprise there. Um, So you import PCA from the decomposition module. And then whenever we use PCA, it's very important that you scale your data. So we're gonna import that. And then the data set that we'll be using is the IRIS data set. And fortunately, sklearn provides a very easy way um, to import it. So to import it, all we have to do is run the load iris function, and then we're going to go ahead and create pandas data frames with the data that is returned from that. So iris data, and then in columns we have iris feature names, and then for y we're going to use categorical because um, there's three different types of irises. Okay. Probably because there's no S there. Um, let me take a look here. That needs to have iris. All right. So if we look at X here, you can see that we have four features. We have the sepal length, the sepal width, the petal length, and then the petal width. And intuitively, you would think that the sepal length and sepal width are highly correlated because as um, it increases, you're going to need the width to support that extra mass. And the same thing with the petal length and petal width. And so we'll be using PCA to reduce these features from four dimensions down to two. And so, like I mentioned before, we're gonna want to scale our data. And so recall how in PCA, we determine the eigenvectors using the uh, covariance matrix and variance is calculated by summing all the distances from the mean. And so you can imagine that if your features are on a completely different scale, so if one's in, you know, it ranges from one to 10 and then another ranges from one to 1000, well, that variance, the computed variance will be um, a lot larger even though the relative variance might be smaller. And so we want to make sure that we scale the data. And in scaling the data, we reduce the mean down to zero, and we reduce the standard deviation uh, to one. And so to do that, we run scalar fit transform, and then we pass in x. Okay, so if I just showed you guys what X looks like now, uh, I suspect it actually returns an array now, yeah. So you can see how the data now ranges from uh, negative, around negative one to one, give or take. And so the next step to do is we are going to, um, create a PCA object, and we're going to pass it the number of components, which is going to be two in this case, because we're reducing the amount of dimensions from four to two. And then the principal components are going to be equal to PCA.fit transform passing in X. 
and then our new x value is going to be the pandas data frame passing in the principal components. And then for columns, we are going to create two new columns, one being PC1 and then the other being PC2. So now if I run uh, new x.head, you can see now that we only have two features, um, PC1 and PC2, and the values here were determined by the projection onto the uh, vector that we calculated during the P PCA step. And so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a scree plot in order to visualize um, the explained variance. And so to do that, we are going to access the property explained variance ratio. And then for labels, we are going to dynamically create the So basically, depending on how many um, dimensions you have after running PCA, in this case, we just have two, that will create the number of columns, I guess. And so now we're going to use matplotlib. And then it's going to vary from one to the number of columns again and then we're going to add one because we don't want it to start at zero and then I'm just going to add other properties here okay so now we'll go ahead and add a label so this will be the percentage of explained variance. And then for our X label, it's going to be the principal components. And then for a title, let's just call it screen plot. And we run plot.show. Uh, labels is not defined. All right, so as you can see here, our first principal component accounts for over 70% of the variance. And then the second component accounts for 25% of the variance. And so that minute percentage of uh, other variance was accounted for by the other dimensions and so we really didn't lose that much information by bringing it down to two dimensions and so that's it for this video if you like this video be sure to subscribe and give it a thumbs up and thank you for watching